Mike Dilbeck joins us now for our Bullying Special Show. He is the founder and president of Project Responsibility and has been at WorkWork this week training students here to be everyday heroes. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Thanks for having me. Um, so, Mike, can you tell us what is an everyday hero? An everyday hero is just an average, everyday, ordinary person, you know, like you and like me, who decides in a moment of time to, to take a heroic action. Now, I say heroic action because that's distinct from just doing good for others, which we should do. But a heroic action is somewhere where you take a risk, you put something at stake in order to keep someone safe, keep them protected, maybe even stand up for their dignity. In your speeches and what your work is, you focus on bystander intervention That's instead right. of presenting bullying. Why is that? I think um, I personally believe that many times we, um, I hate to use the word attack because that doesn't, pretty bit, this bullying issue from the wrong angle. I w I'm really taking a stand for building a community of support so that, you know, for all of us, so that the bullies don't really have a chance to survive. You know, once we have a positive culture where we're supporting each other and standing up for each other and having each other's backs, I think that's when we'll see bullying decrease uh, in our schools and in our workplace and everywhere. What made you want to do this? Well, I started the Responsibility Project in 2007. I produced a video that took off. I mean, it just it struck a chord with people and uh, people started coming to me asking for more. And I like to say it, you know, without sounding religious or anything, I just, I think I, at that moment I had a calling. And I said, there's somebody needs to spread this message. And I saw, well, I'm the one. And how do you know that what you're doing is important? The stories I get, the text messages, the submissions on our website, the, the students that come up to me and tell me, you know, wow, I did this and I did it because I heard your speech or I went to your website and got resources. And I don't think I would have done that had I not had what you gave me. So that, I, we're making a difference. Um, anecdotally, that's what I hear across this country. Um, what would you tell someone who is witnessing bullying? Like, what should they do? Well, it's tricky. You know, I never tell people what to do. I, uh, I, my mission is to just empower them to do what they choose to do, but not get stopped, not give in to fear. Um, you know, do something, do something appropriate, do something effective, but most importantly, do something that's safe. I never tell people to put their own life in danger or their own well-being, but that there, and there are options. And that's another message I have is there are options. It may not be the right thing to throw yourself into a situation and intervene in that moment, but to wait until later or go to the principal or go to somebody in a higher authority and report it and make sure something gets done. Don't just rest and wash your hands of it and go, okay, I've done my job. Why is it important for that group, the bystanders specifically, to do something? I believe that, that we put so much time and resources and energy into trying to get perpetrators not to do what they do. And I don't know that we're doing a good job of it. I don't know if we're making a dent. I say, you know, and using the 80-20 principle, if those are the 20% of people who are doing stuff, you know, whatever behavior it is, why don't we empower the 80% to stand up to them? Why don't we empower the 80% to be the vocal majority now instead of the vocal minority? I mean, or the silent majority, right? Um, speak up. Let surround the people that are perpetrating bad behaviors and saying, no, you will not do that anymore. I think that's where we have a chance to make a dent in inappropriate behaviors. Um, we said earlier in the show roughly about 75% of kids are being bullied. What would you tell those people, those kids who are having issues? Well, you know, I'm not an anti-bullying program. I don't speak to the people being bullied. You know, there are services out there that do. I speak to the bystanders. But um, since you asked the question, you know, and I love the campaign, It Gets Better, even though it's, it's targeted towards LGBT youth. But I would say to them, it does get better. And reach out to your friends, the ones that do want to support you. Your friends are just scared to do that. And ask for support. Say, I'm being bullied, I need, your, I need you to have my back. Now, that takes something, you know, especially at the age sometimes that this happens. So I think just reach out for support, let your parents know. Um, don't be scared to let people know that inappropriate behavior is being thrown at you and get the support that you need. All right, thank you so much, Mike. Mm -hmm. He'll be joining us in just two minutes, but we'll take a quick break right now. I'm Mike 
Greg joins us now in the studio again to talk about what he is doing to help prevent bullying and bystander intervention. So Mike, can you talk about um, the project responsibility that you founded and you're the president of? I am, and it's a responsibility project. Okay. okay? And uh, I founded it in 2007. Uh, as I mentioned, I think in our last segment, I just produced a video and then it struck such a chord with people and it, it was on bystander intervention or is on bystander intervention, and it struck such a chord that it caused a demand in a way that none of my other projects over the past 25, 30 years have caused. I, mean, I started getting calls and emails and requests for more. Can you come talk to us about this? Have you written a book? Have you, what about workshops? And like, people have never asked for those things after I produced a video in the higher education community. So there was a calling, there was a demand, and um, People wanted more information on this. People, they want to intervene. They want to be able to you know, make a difference in a situation. They just don't know how and they get scared. And so this project really empowers people to get involved. Um, what does the Everyday Hero campaign do? The Everyday Hero campaign is a part of and underneath the umbrella of the Responsibility Project. And it's a national engagement initiative that we started two years ago. And I now travel the country speaking on college campuses and even in corporations and associations and we encourage them to have their own Everyday Hero campaign where they engage their community, whatever their community might be, in taking the Everyday Hero Pledge, committing themselves to being the kind of person every day that will take actions to foster change in a situation. And here at Wartburg, we, did, we launched it, and that's what I came here th yesterday and today to really speak inside of and to really kind of elevate on this campus. And we want to invite the entire state to join the Wartburg campaign. And it's raproject.org backslash Wartburg. Okay, so it's raproject.org backslash Wartburg. And uh, they can take the Everyday Hero Pledge, they'll get free resources, they'll get the three tools to bystander intervention emailed to them, and they can get what they need to go out and make a difference in life. Can one person really make a difference? I think that's what it takes. I think we, got, we all gotta consider ourselves as that one person. Because, yeah, you know, it becomes overwhelming and daunting to think, oh, I'm just one person. Who am I to make a difference, right? But what if everybody thought that? And then collectively we're joining together as one person, coming together as a united front. I think that's when we stand a chance at intervening in some of these inappropriate behaviors that we see. All right. Thanks for so much for joining us You're today, welcome. Mike. Thank you.